Welcome back to my minions, to Makeup and Murder. I am the Mistress of Murder, and today we're talking about Marie Beckett. If you want to watch me create this look, this was a look voted on the most, I call it Wild Child. It's a very bright, vivid look with some very extreme lashes. If you want to learn some more about Marie Beckett, there were some snafus along the way because my sources started not lining up as I was going through them. And when that happens, I get very curious. And that led me to, you know, questioning some things that I read about her, the assessments of her. So if you want to see my thoughts on that and how I get there, keep watching. This is one of my eBay wigs, and this is absolutely the worst one I bought. It's terrible, absolutely awful. Like, oh my God, bad. So keep watching Makeup and Murder. I hope you enjoy it. Let's jump in. So today we're talking about Marie Becker. Marie was sentenced to death after killing 11 people. She was born on July 14, 1877 and died June 11, 1942. She was an older murderer. So Marie is one of these people I just find fascinating. As we go, I'll sort of explain why. As a child, Marie was definitely determined to go places. She was worked on a small family farm, so it's not like they have a lot of money. So they needed her to stay home, and she wasn't able to go to school very often. She realized she needed those skills, so she talked to her family priest, and he taught her reading, writing, math in the evenings after dark. She apparently really took those lessons to heart. At 16, she left the farm behind and went to live with her aunt, who had a rope shop. She was smart, and she was not shy. She good with her hands. After she left her aunt's rope shop after a while, she'd started dating. At 17, she moved on to a sewing shop, well, an alteration house. She picks up all these skills while working at this sewing shop that she really does put to use for herself later on. It's how she managed to build a successful dress shop. In 1905, she met her husband, a steady guy named Charles Beckett, and they dated for a, about a year. His family did not like her at all. He was a successful guy, and she was a successful woman, and they just sort of hit it off. They got married in 1906. They built this very steady, stable life. She was well-liked in her community, and Everything seemed to be like this is their perfect little life, right? So in 1920, she opens a very successful dress shop in Liege. I'm pretty sure this is all in Belgium. She was born in Brussels, and then this all happens in Liege. She has this successful little life going on for eight years where she has her husband. She's built this dress shop. She was in it with his family to some extent, and they did not like her at all, at least from what I was reading in some of the books. Sometimes people's opinions are colored after the fact, because I know I certainly wouldn't like her. She were my daughter-in-law after she killed him, right? Everything seemed to be going fine, and then... In 1928, while she's out shopping, she shopping for vegetables of all things, she meets this younger man, and they must have had an instant spark because he made a proposition, and at trial, she pretty much said, when a man propositions a woman, you can't always expect them to say no, essentially. She was pretty much, yeah, we were having sex, so what? Nowadays, you know, okay, but back then, that was pretty much frowned on, and they had a pretty flamboyant affair that a lot of people knew about. I assume her husband must have had some idea, but he, being the steady guy he was, stayed with her. After that, you know, things start going badly because her reputation really takes a hit from this. This is at the end of the 1920s and the stock market crash happened and she ends up losing her shop in 1934. And by this time, she starts having an affair with this guy named Lambert Breyer. And it's this affair that really, really causes the problem. Because she's in love with him, maybe. She sort of thinks she's in love with him. What she does know for sure is she's sick and tired of her husband. She wasn't just bored with him. She was bored to death. Not only that, but she felt that he was so boring, 
he was causing her to age. What better reason to kill a man than he's making you get old? So she poisons him with digitalis and nobody notices because at that time people died and he had some health problems and stuff. So it wasn't like, oh my God, no. It was, okay, well it happens. That sucks. It was just how it was. So she ends up using digitalis to kill him, which becomes her trademark because that's what she kills everybody with. And digitalis is one of those things you can still go pick it right out of the forest today, no problem. As a kid, I actually chewed on foxglove flower, which is where Digitalis comes from. They're super pretty, and it was out in the woods. I had to bite through the stem because they're very thick, and oh my god. My mom almost had a heart attack, so did I, because we're in the middle of nowhere, and I've just chewed on this plant that's poisonous. I still remember that feeling of my heart just pounding in my chest. It's easy to come by, not hard to find. It doesn't leave any traces. And back then, heart attacks weren't uncommon and he wasn't old, but he wasn't young. She kills her husband with the digitalis and she collects her inheritance. So after her husband's dead, she's hanging out with her boyfriend and as things are want to do after you get what you wanted in a situation like that she gets bored or he annoys her or who knows she got it got old he put her in his will deadly mistake and she killed him too at this point she's killing people for money and it's working because nobody's paying attention after all this happened she opens a new dress shop a more exclusive dress shop catering to just the women of the upper crust. She was encouraged to do this by her friends who had no idea how this was going to turn out. When I look at different points of reference, some of the information changes and I don't know if that's because there's a language barrier or and people were translating and they mistranslated or what happened. I usually use Murderpedia for my references. I use another one called like Viteria or something. Normally they line up perfectly or at least close enough that I can ascertain the truth. And this one, the difference between those two is huge. Wikipedia and Murderpedia just say that she was killing people who frequented her dress shop in Missouri, they say that she was a nurse and she was offering to cure people and that's how she got them to take the digitalis. It wouldn't take much to get snake digitalis into somebody's drink really easily. I don't know which of those two things is true, but I will read through to you a little bit about what was going on with her victims and maybe, you know, we can figure this out together. She was accused of 11 murders and then five more that didn't die. Digitalis isn't exactly an exact science, no matter how good you are with it. Different plants will have different strengths of that poison so or medication. People actually still need digitalis to live. It's still prescribed today. On March 23rd of 1933, she kills Marie Dupeng, wife of, must be somebody important because I list his name here. She poisoned his her tea. On November 2nd, 1934, Lambert Breyer dies after making a will out for her. On one of the sites also, they have these two different ways. One says that she dated and killed Briar and then dated Hoy, who was 13 years younger than her, Maximilian Hoy, known womanizer. And I tend to think that's the correct version of events, even though in Wikipedia it lists that backwards. I literally just stopped videoing and went and looked this up again on a different site because I didn't like how the facts were lining up, so it's taking me a minute. I'm sorry if I'm stumbling over stuff. But the one thing I hate is when I get things wrong, and I had one video where I did totally screw up. It's a Carol Ann Pugate. I call her Carly Ann the whole entire video. I still want to call her Carly Ann. Her name is Carol Ann. I screwed that video up so badly on things because some of the references I used were not very good, apparently. Like, you really gotta watch your sources sometimes. Because Lambert Breyer, November 2nd, 1934, after making, he made a will out for her. Then in March of 20th, 1935, she kills Julie Bossy, the landlady of Marie, who had chronic indigestion and suffered even more indigestion after her afternoon tea with Marie. Marie was, she was killing for materialistic goods. May 1st, 1935, she kills Catherine Beacon, 
Perot, poisoned after drinking offered wine. On May 19th, 1935, she kills Aline Demut for a loan of 1,200 francs. On September 15th, 1935, she kills Marie Evren Cooley. On May 7th, 1936, she kills Marie Severant. So she kills Miss Severant um, after she loaned her money. So September 20th, 1936, she kills. Why does she kill all these people with the same name as her? That's a little telling. I hadn't noticed that before because I had to go look up her victims list. Unlike most serial killers, her victims list wasn't as easy to find. They instead focused on how she killed and why she killed and all that. And they don't really focus so much on her victims because they were all killed the same. I think knowing the victims and stuff is really important. And this is one of the reasons why. The fact that she's killing so many people with the same name as her, even if it is a super, super common name, which I have no doubt it was then as it is now, it's still very telling. That's that's pretty uncommon. I've never seen that people with the same name as the killer on a list like this before. I think that there's something psychologically attached to that where she didn't like herself at all. She could have killed and chosen her victims another way. She could have killed men just as easily, probably more easily than she killed women. And it would have been a lot more sympathetic. As I was going down that list, it just really struck me. Looking at something and you've looked at it and you've looked at it and you've looked at it and then you're like, damn. She kills Marie Savart who, who had lent her money for her jewels. September 1936, she kills Marie Williams Butte for her jewels. Because why not steal from the people you kill from? Once you do one, the other isn't that big of a deal. Then on September 26, 1936, Florence Van Carwell LaRange, 83 years old, dies. She was a tenant of Marie's. Then on October 2nd, of 1936, she kills Marie Luxem Wyas, who was 62 years old. And as far as they know, she had no actual reason for killing her, she just did. If you look at women who kill like this, and there was another woman who killed in a very similar sort of thing. She was killing older women than herself for money in Mexico. It's a more recent case, actually. In that case, you get the same thing. It just escalates and escalates. It starts out, they're killing for money and stuff, and it ends up, they're just killing for deep-seated internal psychological bullshit. Looking at the names and stuff and the ages, she was killing women of a similar age to her with the same name as her, and she killed her husband flat out saying she he was making her old. I think she was trying to kill off herself, her own aging self. She was that angry. I know that sounds really freaking weird. It's actually, it's a thing. A lot of times serial killers kill things that they covet or despise. And I think she was killing them because she despised herself. It's pretty difficult to like line your eyes and talk at the same time. So this is the Elizabeth Arden blue eyeliner. So then there's the five people that she tried to kill and was unable to for whatever reason. I'm guessing she got the dosage wrong and she didn't go back and kill people because that would give her away. So the five survivors were Hugo Gunner, buyer of Marie's store, 1934. In May of 1935, she tried to kill Marie Bolli. In June 1935, she tried to kill Marie Fleur. And then she, in 1936, she tried to kill Miss Dallum. And in 1936, she tried to kill Miss Le Jeune Balloon. Sorry if I'm murdering the names. And again, as you can see, she's killing Marie. I really do think there's something to that. I don't think that was accidental or incidental. I'm gonna go do a real quick consult with my forensic psychology major son, because I'm gonna ask him what he thinks of this. I just talked to my son, and he agrees completely. He's in his fourth year and working on his degree in forensic psychology. It's kind of interesting because I've heard of her before, but I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk about the fact that she's killing all these women who had the same name she did. Things like that totally catch my attention. They make me very curious 
I want to know more. It may be in a book somewhere that I just haven't read yet. You know, it hasn't come across my path yet. Now that I know about it, I will be looking into it further. I'm skipping all except for my lower lash line mascara today. My lashes need a bit of an actual mascara break. How she was caught was a friend of hers who was a nurse told Marie she was tired of her husband and wanted him dead. You know how we all occasionally will say something not seriously? And Murray says to her, dead seriously, I can tell you how to do that. And this woman was a nurse. She understood what Murray was saying and that it was entirely possible and probable that Murray had in fact used this method to kill with. The problem was by the time they did the trial and back then, it was impossible for them to truly detect digitalis in the system. They end up with her convicted and she was sentenced to death, but they didn't end up putting her to death. They commute her to a life sentence and she dies in prison. She pretty much owned up to what she did and said, yeah, I did it. What's your point? They deserve to die. So she was very arrogant or maybe she just wanted to die. Maybe that was her real intention. Looking at what she was doing and the way she was killing people, the way she was with the same name as her, that's very telling to me. I wish I could talk to that woman because there's something to that, I guarantee it. I'm not so sure I would classify her as a psychopath certainly she was pathological I mean she killed people because she wanted something from them that was the bottom line she definitely killed people because she wanted something from them but I also think in with that you know that was just a means to an end or a side bonus I think she was killing to kill herself that's today's look and my person today marie becker who i now have more questions about than answers i hope you enjoyed this video and my insights into her and these murders that she did killing you know attempting to kill 16 people and killing 11 of them is no small thing and it's just fascinating to me the way she went about them i hope you enjoyed this episode of Makeup and Murder. Please tune in for the next one. They're probably going to be around every two weeks right now. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye!